Hey folks, Jim Hardiman from Hardiman Images, and this quick tip is on luminance selection of a rim-lit subject using Photoshop. I'm doing this quick tip because of the uh, request that I've had based on a, an image that I posted to the website. Now the image looked like this, and people were wondering how it was done, and I offered to do the quick tip, so here it is. So back to the intro, and essentially you take the photo, and I've got a quick video after this to show the setup so you can see how it was done. But what you do is you backlight uh, an object using a soft box that's covered with a black flag. And the black flag is uh, nothing more than material that's used to obscure the soft box. And in my case, I obscure only the center of it, leaving the sides free to illuminate the sides of the, ob the subject. The settings on the camera are 1 250th of a second, and I use that shutter speed to limit the amount of ambient light that gets in. The aperture I use is f11. Uh, it gives me a good sharp image uh, with the lens that I'm using. But you can change the aperture to adjust the amount of light uh, being uh, allowed to hit the sensor from the flash. I use ISO 200 because that's the native ISO available in my Nikon D300S, but if I, 100 was available as a native ISO I'd be using that. And the flash is fired remotely and I fired at about 100, one half power, sometimes a quarter power. You don't want to have too much light because it will overpower the scene, produce a bunch of specular highlights, and you don't want to have to deal with the post-processing later. And finally, the lens that I use is a longer focal length. I use a 300mm lens. And uh, I do this to narrow the angle of view so that I don't get a lot of the background um, in the scene. You, want, you don't want to see the softbox, uh, the sides of the softbox, if possible. So, enough with the intro. Onto the video on how it's set up, and then we'll get into Photoshop, and I'll show you how easy this is to edit. So here's the setup. We've got the camera sitting on a tripod, and on top of the camera is a SU-800, which is a device for remotely firing a flash. Sitting over on the table, you can see the glass, which is sitting on a piece of black foam core. Now note that the subject has to be reflective. It doesn't necessarily have to be transparent, but it has to reflect light. So a bright polished piece of metal, that kind of thing. Behind that is the soft box with a flag in front of it. In this case, it's a black piece of foam core which is covering the center of the soft box so that the light comes around the glass on both sides and rim lights it. So here you can see at the back of the soft box, I've got a Nikon speed light set to remotely fire uh, when activated by the camera. So the settings in the camera are manual. 1 250th of a second for the shutter speed and f11 for the aperture. So what's left is to actually shoot the photo. So it's already focused, camera's on, flash is on. Simply press the shutter release and you've got a photo. Now on to processing. Now that you've had a chance to see how the uh, setup is done, let's get into Photoshop now and uh, edit this image to uh, produce the final product. And I've made a list of the steps here uh, under the Photoshop heading. So you could pause the video and take a look at this and you'd know what I've done. But we're going to go right into Photoshop now and do some editing. So into Photoshop, here's your finished product. To get there, this is what the image looks like when it comes out of the camera. Notice that there's a little bit of light down here, but overall it's fairly black and only the sides of the object have been rimlet. To do the video, I'm going to work on a, on a less than satisfactory job and show you how easy it is to get rid of the junk that's all around. So here's another image. And in this one, you can see that I've got a lot of the softbox showing and the, the, the base is not very dark. So there's work that needs to be done here. But I'm going to show you, it's not hard to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold down the command key, it would be a control key on a PC, and copy the layer. You can see I just created a copy of the background layer. I now want to select these pixels. The easiest way to do that is to go into the channels palette, panel I guess it's called now, hover over the thumbnail for RGB, hold down the command key, you'll see little square boxes formed over top of my hand on the uh, pointer, and click on it using the mouse, left button. And now if you take a look you'll see that the the highlighted pixels, or the highlight pixels, the bright ones have been selected, even along the sides. So we're going to cause us problems later, but we'll fix that. Then what I do is I go back to the layer panel, and press Command, 
on a Mac, Control on a PC, J, and it copies those selected pixels up onto a new layer here. If I delete, or sorry, disable those two bottom layers, you can just see them faintly here now. The way to make them darker is to build them. And to build them, what you do is just copy the layer, one on top of another. So I take, I'm on this layer here, I hold down the command key, it would be a control key on a PC, and hit the letter J a number of times. One, two, three, four, five, maybe six times. And now you can see that the density of those pixels has improved. I want to make sure I merge these layers together so I can work on them, so I make sure I'm on the top layer. By the way, if you had too many layers done, you could always just delete one by holding clicking the delete key, or pressing the delete key. I hold the shift key down, click on the bottom layer, and then just merge them. There's a number of ways to do it. You can right click on it and you'll get a, a menu item. You can click on this little menu box here and you'll get a, a merge layers. Or you can go up to layer and there's a merge layer option in there. Or you can press the command key or control key on a PC and the letter E and that'll merge those layers together into one layer. There you go. You got your one layer. Now, it's hard to visualize how you'd ever fix this because it looks like an awful mess right now. But what you want to do now is put a fill layer, a black fill layer, underneath this one so you can see what you need to work on. So we'll go up to the layer menu, go down to the new fill layer, go to solid color. There's a color box here, but you'll notice there's no black, so it doesn't help you. What you do is just hit OK. And the color white is what's selected, or, or yeah, selected in the color picker right now. You can change that to black any number of ways. You can click down here. You can change these all to zeros. You can change those all to zeros. Or you can just go to the brightness that's set to 100 right now and set it to zero, and you got black. That simple. Hit OK. You got a new fill layer. It's now obscuring what's underneath it because it's 100% opaque. What you want to do is you want to move that fill layer underneath your merged layers. So you just click on it, drag it until it's underneath. You can see the line show up. Boom. There is your rim-lit glass along with all the rest of the junk that's there. Now, to fix this, you want to get rid of this stuff. There's many, many ways to do it. You could use the lasso tool, select it, delete it. There's a number of ways. The easiest way to do it is to make sure you're on that layer. At least I find it's easiest. Grab the eraser tool. Make the eraser nice and big to start off with. I'm just pressing the right square bracket key to make my brush bigger. And then what I'm going to do is just erase. And I'm not going near too close to my glass because I don't want to damage it. All the way around. Do it over here too. And to do a really good job, what you do is zoom in or zoom out to reveal the sides of your photo. Make sure you got the eraser tool if it disappeared. And then you can make sure you got a perfect edge done. It looks like you're finished. However, if we bring this back up and I go to the adjustment panel and I'm going to add an adjustment, a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and I'm going to crank the brightness all the way up like that. You can see that there are issues here. You can see that white line that's there and there's probably some more luminous, uh, luminous pixels down in here too. You can see it's a bit brighter. So what you do is make sure you're back on that layer that you're working on, not on the brightness contrast layer but on the layer that has the the outline. Zoom in, make sure your brush isn't too big, and just erase those pixels using the eraser from over here. So I'm just erasing them. Go down to the bottom because I saw it was a bit bright here. Just go around it using the eraser. Simple as that. Put your image back in the center and you're essentially done. If you compare it to the completed one, there you go. It's done. I can adjust the bright, go back under the, the brightness and contrast adjustment layer, bring the brightness down to a point where I like it. I can even adjust the contrast if I want, but I really don't have to do that here. And I've got a finished product. At this point I would likely flatten my layers and save it. But that's how easy it is to do with a very pleasing result. So, you've learned how to take the photo, You've learned some work in Photoshop on how to tidy it up, and I used a bad example uh, to show you how easy it was to clean it up. So that's luminous, luminous selections of a rimlet subject using Photoshop. If you want to learn more, 
uh, head over to hardemanimages.com and there's more material there on all sorts of things that uh, are photographic. Hope you enjoyed it. This has been Jim Hardeman from Hardeman Images. Take care now.